Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having an amazing day. Now, welcome to part three of my cacti leafy um, plant series. <laughs> and uh, part three is uh, Queer Bantia. And uh, this is this rather unusual leafy cactus here. And if you haven't done already, I've already, this is, this is part three of the leafy cacti series. Part one was all about uh, Prescia, which is this one here. I have a few different Prescias in my collection. A little bit about that, uh, the Prescia family and all about how to care for it. So that's part one. Part two was all about a Prescioposis, which um, is these sort of weird leafy cacti here, commonly, uh, commonly used as grafting stock. So that was part two. And this is part three, and um, the last of my uh, three-part series on the leafy cacti. So do check out part one and part two if you haven't done already. And um, this video is all about um, Kerkwebantia. What a name. And um, here we go. This is the only one I have in my collection. And uh, it is a very rare type of cactus to see for sale. Um, Prescia is also quite rare. Uh, Prescioposis is a lot more common and very common grafting plant. But the Quibantia is not as uh, common. And I want to include this as part of this series because it's its own little genus in itself. So here we go. Let's talk about this wacky one. First of all, this is mine. This one is um, Quibantia. Um, Zertenere, Zertenere, very um, strange name there and it's a very lethal and spiny and it has glow kids as well so if you touch it oh, it comes off in your fingers but I just love it it's absolutely wacky guys and uh, see, it's pronounced queer bentia um, very uh, strange name there and it's actually closely related to the Prescioposis cacti, as I say, which is this one here and also what I covered to show other Prescioposis I covered in uh, part two's video there. Um, it is closely related and at one point it was even put under the same uh, category as Prescioposis, but it's actually not. It's its own genus type. And it's also um, closely related as well to the Apuntia family. And in some cases, some some places, some people actually say it is actually part of the Apuntia family, um, commonly known as the Apuntioida C family, um, commonly known as the, the prickly pear cacti because of how their pads resemble prickly pears. And the reason why it's in that same type of group is because the same as Prescioposis, the um, areoles, areoles here, which are where the spines come out of on cactus plants, um, has um, glow kids which rather than just spines as you can see there there's one just come off in my finger so I just want to show you there ouch um those you common with a prickly pear cacti will know them only too well because they they have glow kids like prescopsis do they they sort of sometimes sometimes come under the sort of group of the uh, apuntioida c family in this case cylindra apuntia but it is strictly its own little genus in itself because quibantia is its own own sort of oddity as they say and um, it's its own single genus, as I've mentioned, but there's only about five really known uh, species of Quibentia that I know of. Um, I tried to actually do a bit more research on this. It is quite a rare cactus, but as I, as I know, there's only really five in sort of cultivation anyway. And in its natural habitats, this grows in tropical dry forests, whereas Prescioposis will grow in tropical humid forests. This one likes to be grown in tropical dry forests and often amongst shrubland as well in South America. And it can grow into quite a large tree in its natural habitats, up to 50 feet high, so it can grow into quite a large plant. Um, this one, I think, will be a long time before that grows that size though. And um, yeah, it, it, the, the, the lighting conditions, this does like to be grown in full sun. It can also take part shade as well. So if it's not in the, you know, a very, the most sunniest position you can give it, it will still grow well as long as you can give it some sun. Um, but it, do, it, do, it doesn't need to have as intense sunshine as a lot of the desert types of cacti, like the saguaro, for example. But it does like to have the sunniest spot you can give it. So bear that in mind if you're growing this. We have this in a front of our south facing window. And then we have it out in our polytunnel during the summer months where it gets plenty of sun. Um, here in the summer months so if you're growing this one indoors and you don't have a sunny window then I'd recommend probably having additional grow lights we have the grow lights on today because it's a 
darkish day as you can see outside and it gives a bit of an extra boost just to overwinter it. Now when it comes to watering, in the spring and summer they like to be watered every time the soil in the pot, like that, dries out. Uh, so I, in the summer, spring and summer, I give it good water and then when the soil is totally dry again, I water it again. And I'll only do that from spring through to the end of summer. Um, over the winter, they like to be kept totally dry. There's no need to water these. Unlike Prescheopisys, that can take a bit of watering once a month because they're more tropical and more humid. These um, like to be kept totally dry over the winter time and then I resume normal watering from spring and summer. And the soil mix, they like, like all cacti, they like a very, very well draining cactus and succulent soil mix. And I like to make my own cactus soil, which uh, is uh, three equal parts of a loam based soil mix with horticultural sand and grit. If I can't use grit, then I'll use perlite, but I prefer to use grit in three equal parts. And if you want to know how I make my own cactus and succulent soil, then check, check out the video I've made. Links up above. And also put it at the end of this video too. I use this with, with this one, it seems to grow very well. I use that cactus mix with the majority of my cacti and succulents except for my um, epiphytes and therefore I'll use more of a, a more of a peat based soil with the epiphytes as well as the loam but that's with this particular cactus it likes a very very well draining soil mix. And when it comes to feeding, um, this from spring and summer, I will feed this once a month with a cactus and succulent fertiliser. Um, they, they really appreciate a good quality cactus and succulent fertiliser um, once a month because like a lot of cacti, they love to be well fed during the, the spring and summer when they're actively growing. And now the temperature, because as I said, this is a tropical leafy cactus, then like the Prescia and the Prescheopisys, they do like to be kept overwintered warm. This does not like a cold winter temperature, unlike some of the other cacti that can go down to low temperatures. That's our polytunnel out there. We overwinter a lot there at 5 Celsius, but this needs a minimum of 12 Celsius, which is around 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So bear that in mind if you have this. I wouldn't recommend keeping it in a green greenhouse or anything in the winter keep it indoors and uh, don't let the temperature drop below 55 degrees fahrenheit because it's as i say one of the tropical ones now the flowers this one hasn't flowered for us yet but hopefully in the future and um, the flowers are usually rose and red and um, they're pretty but as i say no flowers on this one yet but uh, always time it's only a small one our propagation is from seeds and cuttings most common method being with cuttings and I haven't actually propagated this myself this is the only plant I've got when it grows large and I have to prune it then I will have a go at, at propagating it with cuttings but when if you have this plant and you want to propagate it with cuttings then please do um please do bear in mind that when you take cuttings for example if you're cutting any part off you must allow the cut part to fully callous over which is to, to dry totally form a thick white skin before inserting it in soil in cactus soil and treating it as a cutting so usually allow um, probably a couple of weeks to, for the cut end to dry before you treat it as a cutting and that's pretty much it and as I say always cuttings always best taken spring and summer I think I've covered everything there lighting watering soil feeding temperature flowering and propagation and a little bit about the plant so um, as I'm sure you'll agree very unusual and if you haven't got this weird cactus in your collection then I think it's a good one to add along with Prescia and Prescheopisys too so guys I hope you enjoyed this leafy cactus plant series and stay tuned for lots more how to care for individual types of cacti coming up on my YouTube channel and also going to be putting a lot more care video um, vlog uh, blogs on my website too so stay tuned for that and if you want to know a little bit more on how to grow cacti suckers in general then don't forget to check out my website desertplantsofavalon.com and if you haven't done already, please subscribe and don't forget that click that notification bell. And thanks so much for watching everybody. I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of cactus power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye.